Okay. It's kind of a follow-up to the last video I just made about multiple projects. Uh, one project is water source heat pump using to heat my domestic water in my house. It's been working great. Worked all summer. It's heating right now, but the side effect is it blows cold air into the space. With the compressor all the way down 35 hertz, it's still blowing out 56. It was blowing out like 54 a few minutes ago when it was at a... 40 hertz, plus it was warmer in here, or colder in here before because I had the door shut. So the door shut, it gets down to like, you know, 50 to 60 degrees in here. It's too cold. I don't want to sit out here and work in my electronics area. So I want to try something different. I might want to just put the, you know, heat pump section outside since so it won't overcool the garage and it doesn't really run long enough to actually cool the garage when you want it cool in the summer. I got to put a mini split out here. For next summer so gonna do something different to try to heat up my water with refrigeration so i have a yeah idea of building up a little condenser unit a little small one out of this i'm gonna clean up i have a little variable speed compressor right there it's a change out warranty and i guess they didn't need the compressor back gotta double check on that but it ran it was just they just said it was noisy so i'll put that on here uh, other water ex heat exchanger i have See if I can mount that all on here. Hopefully it'll fit. Put that uh, outside my house and just run the water lines from the water heater. Or from the, I should say, the storage tank out to the, uh, you know, heat pump. Use this for the evaporator section, you know, which is what it will be on my water source heat pump. And I'm like, wait a minute. When I came out here, you know, cutting the pipes off, I'm like, it's only a little quarter inch pipe. Seems a little small for a suction, even though it's going to be a one ton, you know capacity i'm 12,000 btus i'm like oh didn't even think about it till now this is you know tube it's piped as a simple condenser you know hot gas going in here goes back and forth and then it's condensed liquid coming out the bottom so it, it would not make a very efficient evaporator so what i could see what i could do i'm going to stare at it for a few minutes off camera and maybe see if i can make it into like split circuits why do I have to compete on my work with your addiction to Beartooth? Alexa, pause. <laughs> so, uh, all right, this wasn't actually too hard to figure out. I kind of went in here, marked the one circuit, followed this path. It goes through to this, and then it's pretty much all the way down. So I put a, a white mark on each one for that circuit. Goes through over here, jumps over here to this middle one, and goes up, you know, as I marked here. And then, so I want this to actually be the suction. And this is going to be suction since they have two quarter inch lines already, you know, stubbed in. So I found 16 passes each direction um, from here to, to this one and this one to this one. So it sh should be perfect. Okay, I just cut myself two capillary tubes. And what I did is I found some online calculator actually let me put refrigerant 410A in there, threw in some arbitrary numbers, 40 degree of evaporator and 6,000 BTUs per half. So it's 12,000 total, but it'd be half and half. So hopefully it gives me the right length. And it actually spit out 45 inches. Okay, just brazed in those two feeders. And at this point, like I said, you get 16 passes each before each collected suction line. I drilled a hole to run those through, but the torch wound up the heat. I tried to keep the heat away from it, but it customized that a little bit. But that would be okay. Okay. Before I mount the compressor, I just drilled some holes for it. Welded in some bolts. All right. It's now ready to uh, mount the compressor. And that heat exchanger. Okay, it's progressing along. Everything's bolted in place. Just reconfiguring the copper tubing. Need to swage this 5 8 right here. And, uh, I don't know if I can get one handed here, but I love these spinning swage sets. <laughs> I didn't have two hands. Yeah, so nice bell end right there to 
that'll go like that. And then this is 3 8 so I gotta step it down to 5 16 which is gonna come out of the top of the rotary compressor. Now people will look at these and think that, you know, like this is the suction, but it's not. It is, this is the discharge. This is the built-in accumulator, I guess, and strainer that comes on these things. I mean, they're part of the compressor. And then you got your, uh, this is the suction. So suction's only 3 8 on this. 5 16 discharge. Hey, I have this thing all piped together and pulling a vacuum on it now. Check this out. If you can hear me over all the noise. This thing is, uh, man, it came up pretty decent. Heat exchanger here and the compressor there all bolted down so the hot gas again comes out in there, out of here. Make this, uh, let's see if we can turn the light on. Got this, uh, splitter right here so it comes out the liquid line, splits to the two separate capillary tubes, which uh, both feed into there, which you guess you already saw. So. Um, such lines done. I made this uh, two circuits join the one right here. Goes right over to the suction here. And that looks like OEM right there, don't it? <laughs> OEM, solder top, all of that stuff looks, <laughs> came out nice. Uh, and then what I had to do, of course, is I had to do my little trick of nurdling the pipe and putting in the suction port right there. Already had the hot gas port right here on this one. Nurdled this, put in a uh, presser switch I had. Yeah, I'm going to something I had. So, only thing is I didn't have, this is 5 sixteenths, so I had to kind of pinch this. It works. Some people probably talk shite, but I didn't have any 5 sixteenths pipe, and that goes into the 3 eighths, so I uh, swaged the 3 eighths and then had to bend it. So, uh, put a little bit of refrigerant in it. I should be able to start the compressor. Okay. Well, the compressor does run off of the variable frequency drive. I've actually had it all the way up to 120 hertz, which is what it goes up to, but after a short operation, it doesn't seem to be too happy. It does vibrate a little bit, which was the reason that we replaced the compressor. It was from a complaint, someone else diagnosed it. When I uh, ran the unit before I pulled out the compressor, it actually seemed to be working, and it does pump. It's 40 hertz, which is really slow for one of these. But this thing, it, it like the compressor like gets tight or something, and then it pulls overload on the VFD. Listen, to that there's that vibration. Which and it's suck, this sucker. Man, this suction feels way cool compared to the line up here. So something's going on. Maybe there's a restriction. No, it can't be because I'm reading my pressure right here. It's just weird because the suction line isn't all that cold to grab. You see it's 54 degrees, which is just like the temperature out here, but yet it's freaking really cold on this accumulator thing. I know if I turn up much more, it'll start wigging out. And it just did it overloaded. And when I put my amp meter on there, it shoots up. It shoots up pretty high, up to over like 15 amps per day, which is, things already pulling more than it should. So, I don't know. I knew that this might not work. The compressor itself does run off the VFD, even though it says shows a DC sign. I think they just mean, oops, that's right. They just mean that it's, oops, um, you know, an inverter-driven compressor, which it is technically pulsed DC that comes out of these. Anyway, I do have that other little compressor off that little portable AC unit, but it's a little less than a ton. Single phase. And it might work just fine on this for all I know. Won't have the VFD or anything controlling it or whatnot, but I don't know. All I know is that thing up there is freezing me out of here. Either that or I can just move that thing outside and just pipe the water lines you through there. That's why I have a hot chocolate. You have a hot chocolate? Yeah. Because it's cold? Yeah. 
So I try to run the leads per that right there. But uh didn't seem to do it. I'll try running it one more time before I take this out of screen capture mode. You can see the pressure's on the screen. The refrigerant charge is just a you know ballpark. You can see the high side never shoots up that much, although there's a bit of subcooling. Oh, and I don't even but I don't even have water feeding through this thing. So I expect the, the high side just to start climbing, and it isn't. This is warm but not hot. And maybe that could just need a little well I'm saying needs more of a but look at the subcooling, it's like pretty high number there. Oh that would be wait a minute. I moved the wrong I moved the wrong meter, that's why. Since this one. I moved the meter on the wrong thing. I thought that was liquid. <laughs> Like the line is over here. Okay. <laughs> well, I looked over here, you think, oh, that's liquid line. It's my suction line. <laughs> Just forgot what I was working on, even though I built it. Yeah, liquid line's down here. That's the suction line. All right, this thing's being a real turd. So... Turd. So again, some pretty weird thing going on here. I'm gonna put this thermometer out here so we can see it. I'm taking temperature with that uh, on the bottom of the accumulator here. And you know, never. I mean, I, you know, who knows what's going on in this thing? I mean, I know that I'm pretty sure there's a strainer in these. I might have to open it up and take a look. But if there was a restriction here, then my suction pressure should be kind of high up here. You would think. It's not. So, actually, the pressures looked pretty good as far as pressures. It was like, you know, two something over like 119, 110 going through the capillary tubes. But then I put the pinch off tool here. I have it way pinched down. And here's the weird thing. And this, this is always a weird phenomenon that I've never really figured out. But sometimes it's like it's running and it's like not even really doing work through the evaporator here. It's like not even really dropping the temperature. A suction line is like the same temperature as the room I'm in here. And even when I underfeed it, the first, you know, it still sucks. And then yet the accumulator will just start frosting up like a mother. So let's go back up to like room temperature 55. I'm surprised it's that warm. It feels colder than right out here. So I'm gonna run. Two pressures there going. It gets choked down the suction because I have the pinch off tool on it. Right before the line right before it goes into the capillary tube. Right? But then yet look at the accumulator temperature, it's gonna drop like a rock. And you're gonna see frost develop. Look at that. Like what the hell? See my uh, suction line? It's pretty much the temperature of the room, 53 degrees. And I'm really starving the suction pressure, which is taken right here, right there, so it drops down in the accumulator there. It is 16, because I think it's off. But yet, when I restart it, look at this. It's like it's boiling off liquid in here, but you think it'd all be boiled off um, after a little while, but it doesn't. Yeah, 28 degrees in this down there. Actually coming up just a pinch. Right? Nope, no, it's going down. Just me touching the wire there. 25 degrees. Look at that frost on there. 53 degrees up here, right before it drops down in there. But the bottom is like 28, 30, whatever. It's an old tire thermometer. And if I kick it up, it'll. It's like it slugs it. Kick it way up. See if it, I would like this to boil it off real quick. Okay. 
did find her there. The long as I kept it running. Oh, there it went overloaded. So weird, huh? <laughs> Such a cool part. What's that? This is still blowing cool out. It's just down to 35 hertz because the uh, leaving water temperature is up over 130. Oop. Damn, camera time out. Leaving water temperature is over 130 on the water heater. That's why it's slowed down to 35 hertz. It's just slowing down a little bit. Oh, that's so. So yeah, this project's kicking my ass right now. It does not like that. So I pinched. As much as I've pinched it off, you thought for sure this thing ain't going to be slug in the compressor. This is just so weird. It's weird. This line is not cool at all. And then you just grab the accumulator and it's, it's perfectly cold. Mm, no. Over here. So warm but not hot. <laughs> but things like the vibrations on this thing is crazy. So it might have been bad after all. And maybe it's just tight. Maybe I'm just futile that I'm even trying. So probably time to shut down for the night. Anyway. Well, maybe tomorrow I might pull this compressor back out and put maybe my little rotary one that, yeah. in here. And just see if it just works totally normal off of it. So crazy just weird what's going on and when I do pull this out I might take a look down in this accumulator see uh, see if it just seems weird but all right guys catch you later.